I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Luke and Sarah were amateur astronomers who spent their weekends away from the city lights under the vast, starry expanse of the New Mexico desert. Equipped with a modest telescope and a boundless enthusiasm for the cosmos, they chased celestial phenomena, hoping to capture a glimpse of shooting stars or distant planets. One clear night in late August, they set up camp in a secluded area known among local astronomy buffs for its unobstructed views of the Milky Way. The night was particularly promising, with a meteor shower expected to peak just after midnight. As the sky darkened and the first stars appeared, Luke and Sarah aligned their telescope, their anticipation building with each passing hour. The desert around them was silent, save for the occasional howl of a distant coyote or the rustle of the wind through sparse vegetation. Just past midnight, as the meteor shower began in earnest, a brilliant streak of light sliced through the night sky, brighter and closer than any they had seen before. Excited, they adjusted the telescope, hoping to track the meteor's descent. But as they located the object again, they realized it wasn't behaving like a typical meteor. Instead of burning out, it seemed to slow down and change direction, maneuvering in ways that defied the natural physics of falling space debris. Intrigued and a bit unnerved, they continued to observe as the object descended toward the desert floor, its trajectory ending not far from their campsite. The night was suddenly silent, the regular chorus of the desert inexplicably hushed. Driven by a mix of curiosity and apprehension, Luke suggested they investigate. Packing a flashlight and their camera, they headed toward the estimated landing site, the light from their flashlights bobbing across the rough terrain. After a 20-minute walk, they came upon a small crater, at the center of which lay a glowing object, not much larger than a basketball, its surface smooth and metallic, radiating a soft, pulsating light. As they approached, the air around them grew noticeably colder, and the object began to emit a low, resonant hum. Sarah, ever the cautious one, advised keeping a safe distance, but Luke, overwhelmed by curiosity, moved closer to examine the object. As he reached out tentatively, the object suddenly sprang to life, unfolding and reshaping itself into a more complex structure. It was clearly technology, but unlike anything they had ever seen. The object floated up from the crater, hovering at eye level with Luke, who stood frozen in place, his hand still extended. A panel on its surface then illuminated, projecting a holographic display of star maps and symbols that were completely foreign to both of them. Suddenly, the device emitted a series of chirping sounds, a form of communication that seemed directed explicitly at them. Luke and Sarah exchanged a glance, realizing that they were likely in the presence of an alien technology that was attempting to interact with them. Overwhelmed with the magnitude of their discovery, they debated their next steps. Should they attempt to communicate or retreat and report their findings? As they deliberated, another light appeared on the horizon, this one larger and accompanied by a soft rumbling that gradually grew louder. As the light approached, it became evident that the first object was not alone. A much larger craft was descending toward their location, its design and lights unlike any aircraft known to man. Panic set in as they realized that they might be on the brink of a full-fledged alien encounter. Frozen in place, Luke and Sarah watched as the craft opened, revealing a complex interior and figures moving within. The small device continued to chirp and whir, perhaps signaling to its counterparts. The night, once filled with the beauty of a meteor shower, now hosted an unprecedented meeting, the outcome of which was entirely uncertain. As the figures from the craft began to emerge, Bathed in the glow of otherworldly lights, Luke and Sarah stood on the edge of the unknown, their lives forever changed by what was about to unfold under the starlit sky of the New Mexico desert. As the figures approached, Luke and Sarah could see that their forms were distinctly non-human. Elongated limbs, smooth, silvery skin, and large, opaque eyes that seemed to absorb the moonlight. They moved with an eerie grace, each step deliberate and unhurried, as if accustomed to Earth's gravity despite their alien form. The small device that had first landed continued its chirping and humming, now floating back to the larger craft, as if guiding its companions to the encounter. Luke, holding Sarah's hand tightly, whispered, We should stay calm, observe, maybe try to communicate. Sarah nodded, her fear mingled with a profound awe at the unfolding events. 
One of the alien figures stopped a few yards away from them. It raised a hand, a universal gesture, while another device on its wrist flickered to life, emitting a series of soft, harmonic tones. It was clear that this was an attempt at communication, though the meanings were indecipherable to Luke and Sarah. Responding to the peaceful gesture, Luke also raised his hand, mirroring the alien's greeting. The figure tilted its head slightly, perhaps a sign of acknowledgement or curiosity. The harmonic tones changed, becoming more rhythmic, almost musical, pulsating through the cool desert air. Sarah, encouraged by the apparent friendliness, took a small step forward. We come in peace, she said slowly, her voice trembling not just from fear, but also the surreal reality of speaking to beings from another world. The alien responded by projecting a series of images from the device on its wrist. The pictures were fast moving and blurred at first, but soon they slowed, displaying scenes of stars, galaxies, and unknown planets, then images of Earth from space, and finally, the Amazon rainforest, the Egyptian pyramids, and other earthly landmarks. It was a breathtaking revelation. These beings had been observing Earth, possibly for centuries, and knew its geography and cultures. The montage ended with a picture of the night sky, filled with countless stars, possibly their home or a map back to it. The encounter took a more serious turn, as another alien joined the first, carrying a device that looked like a complex scanner. It pointed the device at Luke and Sarah, a soft blue light scanning them from head to foot. The purpose was unclear, but the device made no sound, and the light was not uncomfortable. Just deeply unsettling, as they realized they were being analyzed on a perhaps molecular or even genetic level. As the scanning process ended, the aliens communicated amongst themselves in their chirping, harmonic language, then turned back to Luke and Sarah. This time, the tones emitted from the wrist device were different, suggesting a shift in the mood or the nature of their visit. The desert around them felt alive with the presence of these otherworldly visitors, and the night no longer belonged just to the stars, but to the witnesses of a pivotal moment in human-alien interaction. Luke and Sarah knew that whatever the outcome, the story of this night would change not just their lives, but potentially the understanding of humanity's place in the cosmos. The aliens began to retreat slowly to their craft, signaling for Luke and Sarah to follow. As they approached the open hatch of the alien ship, the reality of stepping aboard, of leaving the Earth behind even for moments, loomed large before them. With a mixture of dread and exhilaration, they moved closer to the threshold between their world and the unknown, their story on the brink of either an extraordinary journey or a profound ordeal. As Luke and Sarah tentatively followed the aliens toward their craft, the air thickened with a palpable sense of foreboding. The ground beneath their feet seemed to hum with energy, the vibrations rising up through their bodies, making every step feel heavy and deliberate. The opening of the craft loomed before them, a portal aglow with an eerie, pulsating light that seemed to breathe in rhythm with the alien's strange, melodic communications. Inside, the interior of the craft was unlike anything they could have imagined, a vast expanse that seemed to defy the outer dimensions of the vessel. Corridors branched off into darkness, and the center of the ship housed a massive chamber filled with luminescent panels and floating holographic displays. The air was cool and crisp, filled with a faint, unidentifiable aroma. The aliens guided them into the central chamber, where devices and instruments of unknown purposes hummed and flickered. The harmony of lights and sounds was almost hypnotic, drawing Luke and Sarah deeper into a state of awe and disorientation. Their guide gestured toward a pair of seats resembling sleek, molded pods, indicating they should sit. As they complied, straps gently but firmly secured them in place. The main alien, who had first communicated with them, now stood before a large, translucent screen, displaying a star map with constellations unfamiliar to human eyes. It pointed to various stars, emitting a series of harmonic tones that seemed urgent, its gestures growing more animated. Suddenly, the craft began to vibrate, the frequency increasing rapidly as a deep rumble filled the air, drowning out the harmonic tones. The chamber's lights shifted from soothing blues and greens to a harsh, pulsating red, casting ominous shadows that danced along the walls. Luke and Sarah exchanged panicked looks, their initial awe turning to fear as the reality of their situation set in. The alien turned to face them, 
its large eyes now reflecting a disturbing intensity. The device on its wrist activated once more, projecting a series of rapid images directly into Luke and Sarah's minds. The images were violent and chaotic, scenes of cosmic battles and planetary destruction, species being erased and worlds turning to dust. It became clear that the aliens, far from mere observers, were part of an interstellar conflict of unimaginable proportions, a war that Earth had unknowingly been drawn into. The aliens had not come in peace, but in desperation, seeking not just contact, but asylum, or worse, conscripts. As the realization dawned on them, Luke and Sarah struggled against their restraints, but the pods held them fast, their technology too advanced, too alien. The craft's vibrations reached a crescendo, a terrifying symphony of impending doom. Without warning, the chamber filled with a blinding light, and the sensation of movement was overwhelming, beyond anything terrestrial. They were leaving Earth, pulled into the abyss of space, their fate no longer their own. The last thing Luke and Sarah saw before losing consciousness was the alien's face, impassive and cold, as the stars outside streaked by, the Earth receding into a distant point of light, possibly forever. Their terrifying journey into the unknown had just begun, with no promise of return, abducted not by explorers, but by refugees of the cosmos, embroiled in a celestial war that humanity was now unwittingly a part of. It was a chilly October evening when James, a wildlife photographer, and his partner Helen, an ecologist, set out to the dense forests of Northern California. They were on a mission to document the nocturnal habits of local fauna using infrared cameras and other sensory equipment. James had meticulously planned the expedition, knowing that the isolated trails and deep woods offered the best chance for rare wildlife sightings. They set up their base camp near a clear, serene lake surrounded by towering redwoods and thick underbrush. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the forest came alive with the sounds of nocturnal creatures, an eerie symphony that thrilled Helen. They had been hiking and setting up equipment for hours when James noticed an odd, pulsating light through the trees. It wasn't like anything he'd seen before, a soft blue glow that seemed to flicker and dance between the trees. Curious, they decided to investigate, thinking it might be a camper with an unusual light source, or possibly bioluminescent organisms, which Helen was eager to see. As they approached, however, it became clear that the light source was neither. It was larger, brighter, and seemed to move with purpose, swaying back and forth in a rhythmic pattern that was almost hypnotic. <laughs> they reached a clearing where the light was more intense and were stunned to see what appeared to be a spacecraft of some kind. It was unlike any human-made object James or Helen had ever seen, smooth and elliptical, emitting a humming sound that resonated through the air like a tuning fork. As they stood there, trying to process the sight, the craft's surface began to change, becoming translucent, revealing shadows inside that moved with intelligent grace. Suddenly, the craft opened and a ramp descended to the forest floor. From the glowing interior, three figures emerged. They were tall, slender, and humanoid, but with elongated limbs and large, almond-shaped eyes that reflected the moonlight. The beings seemed to communicate with each other through a series of chirps and low vibrations before turning their attention to James and Helen. Paralyzed with a mixture of fear and fascination, James raised his camera instinctively and took a photo. The flash seemed to startle the beings, who paused and directed their gaze towards him. One of the creatures stepped forward, extending a hand-like appendage in a gesture that could have been seen as threatening or inviting. James wasn't sure which. As the being approached, a device on its wrist emitted a beam of light that scanned James and Helen from head to toe. The process was silent but left them feeling exposed, as if their very thoughts might be transparent to these visitors. After the scanning, the creatures chirped among themselves, the tones higher and seemingly agitated. James and Helen stood frozen, unsure of their next move. The beings then communicated with them, not through spoken language, but directly into their minds. Images and feelings flooded through them, visions of distant galaxies, alien landscapes, and the creature's planet, a place of vast oceans and floating islands. The communication was overwhelming but enlightening, revealing that the beings were explorers, 
much like themselves, but from a world many light years away. They conveyed a sense of urgency, a warning of a looming ecological disaster that threatened their world and possibly Earth. The message was clear. They needed help. But as the mental images became more intense, showing scenes of their planet dying, the air around the clearing began to shift. The temperature dropped, and the forest sounds were silenced, as if nature itself was reacting to the alien presence. And James and Helen knew this was only the beginning of something beyond their understanding. As they grappled with the reality of their encounter, the craft's lights brightened, casting long shadows into the woods and illuminating the faces of the beings with a stark, otherworldly glow. The night, once merely a backdrop for their scientific pursuits, had turned into a stage for a first contact scenario that would challenge everything they knew about the universe and their place within it. As the intensity of the encounter escalated, Helen, grappling with the flood of telepathic images, suddenly felt a profound connection with these alien beings. Their plight, their world's impending doom, resonated deeply with her ecological sensitivities. James, on the other hand, was overwhelmed with a mix of awe and fear, his instincts as a photographer battling his primal urge to flee from the unknown. The aliens, sensing their mixed emotions, moderated the intensity of their telepathic communication, adjusting to a more gentle and rhythmic flow of images. They projected scenes of their technology, showcasing their advancements and the ecological solutions they had developed, but which were now failing them due to the scale of their planet's environmental degradation. Eager to document this unprecedented encounter, James, shaking, raised his camera again, this time with the aliens seeming permission. As his flash briefly lit the area, it captured the ethereal beauty of the beings, their features soft yet distinctly alien, surrounded by the aura of their ship. Encouraged by their openness, Helen asked, through tentative mental outreach, what specifically brought them to Earth. The beings responded with a series of vivid visions. They had detected similar ecological patterns on Earth that mirrored the early stages of their own planet's crises. They were here not only to seek help, but to offer their knowledge to prevent Earth from suffering a similar fate. The beings guided James and Helen into the spacecraft. Inside, the environment was controlled and serene, with walls that pulsed with a gentle, living light. The interior was surprisingly minimalist, functional, yet undeniably alien in design with consoles and screens displaying data in an incomprehensible script. As they ventured deeper into the ship, they were led to a central chamber where a holographic globe of the alien's home planet rotated slowly. The globe zoomed in on areas marked with red, showing the catastrophic environmental changes they were facing. Nearby, another globe displayed Earth, with certain regions starting to blink with the same ominous red. The beings explained that their mission was twofold to gather data from Earth's environments and to establish a cooperative exchange of knowledge. They believed that Earth could benefit from their advanced technology, which could help reverse the damage already inflicted on the planet. However, as the session continued, a sudden alarm reverberated through the ship. The being's demeanor shifted. They became visibly agitated, communicating amongst themselves in rapid, sharp chirps. The holograms flickered and switched to display a series of aggressive red patterns. They quickly ushered James and Helen back to the exit. Before they were sent out, one of the beings conveyed a dire warning. Another faction from their world did not believe in intervention or cooperation with less advanced planets and saw Earth as a resource to be exploited, not saved. They were on their way, and the intentions were not benevolent. James and Helen were hastily escorted off the ship, the ramp retracting behind them as they stepped back into the cool night air of the forest. The spacecraft's lights dimmed, then brightened significantly, preparing for what seemed like an imminent departure, or perhaps a defensive maneuver. And standing back at the edge of the clearing, their minds racing with the knowledge and warnings shared, James and Helen watched as the craft lifted off. It disappeared into the night sky with a silent grace, leaving behind a shimmering trail of light that slowly faded. The forest sounds gradually returned, but the night no longer felt the same. The couple knew they had to warn others, to share the knowledge and the warning. But who would believe them? And more importantly, was there enough time to prepare for what was coming? As they made their way back to camp, the weight of their responsibility bore down on them. The alien encounter far from over, now intertwined with the fate of their own world. As they hurried back to their camp, 
The weight of the encounter weighed heavily on both James and Helen. Their minds were racing with a mix of fear, excitement, and a daunting sense of responsibility. They needed to share what they had learned, but the reality of convincing anyone about their encounter seemed overwhelming. The night felt oppressively silent as they packed up their gear, the earlier chirping of crickets and rustling of small nocturnal creatures eerily absent. The silence was stifling, intensifying their unease. Every shadow seemed to flicker with potential danger, every slight noise a signal of impending doom. Determined to make it back to civilization by dawn, they hurriedly dismantled their campsite. As they did, a strange electrical sensation filled the air, the hairs on their arms standing on end. The night sky, previously clear, was now rolling with clouds that moved unnaturally fast, converging directly above them. The wind picked up suddenly, howling through the trees with a ferocity that made speaking difficult. James shouted to Helen over the roar, suggesting they find shelter. But before they could move, a brilliant light pierced the sky, illuminating the forest like daylight. It wasn't the soft blue glow of the friendly alien's craft, but a harsh, glaring white that blinded them momentarily. As their eyes adjusted, a massive object descended through the clouds, its shape obscured by the intense light. It was much larger than the craft they had encountered earlier, and it exuded a palpable sense of threat. The air vibrated with the power of its engines, a deep, resonating pulse that felt as if it could shake the earth apart. Frozen in place, James and Helen could only watch as several smaller craft detached from the main ship, descending towards the forest around them. These were not the serene, curious explorers they had met before. These ships were armed, aggressive, their designs sharp and menacing. Suddenly, the main ship emitted a powerful beam of light that scanned the area, sweeping over the forest and directly over James and Helen. They tried to run, but the light seemed to follow them, faster than they could possibly move. They felt a searing heat as the beam enveloped them, lifting them off the ground. The last thing James saw before losing consciousness was the look of sheer terror on Helen's face as they were drawn up into the ship, their bodies paralyzed by the beam's force. The terrifying reality of their situation set in. They were being taken, not by the benevolent beings they had hoped might save their planet, but by an unknown alien force with clearly hostile intentions. Their disappearance would be noted eventually, their abandoned gear found at a desolate campsite. Search parties would be sent out, and theories would abound, but no trace of them would ever be found. James and Helen, like so many before them, would become another unsolved mystery a cautionary tale of the dangers lurking in the unexplored shadows of our world. The terrifying truth of their fate, absorbed into the annals of extraterrestrial encounters, would echo in the whispered warnings of those who dare to look up at the stars and question what lies beyond. Brian, a seasoned park ranger, had spent over a decade patrolling the vast, rugged landscapes of Alaska's Denali National Park. Known for its harsh beauty and remote wilderness, the park was Brian's second home, its secrets and sounds as familiar to him as his own heartbeat. One late September evening, as the autumn chill began to seep into the air and the last of the tourists had left for the season, Brian prepared for a routine overnight patrol in one of the more isolated sectors of the park. He set out at dusk, the sky painted with streaks of orange and pink as the sun dipped below the horizon. His goal was to check on several remote trail cameras that had been triggered the night before, possibly by wildlife. As he drove his standard-issue ATV down the narrow, winding trail, the forest around him grew denser, the trees like silent sentinels in the growing darkness. A few hours into his patrol, Brian noticed something unusual, a faint, pulsating light off in the distance not like anything he had seen before. It wasn't the steady glow of a camper's fire or the blinking light of an aircraft. Curious, he steered off the main trail, heading towards the source. As he drew closer, the light grew more intense, a brilliant blue that seemed to illuminate the forest canopy. Parking his ATV, Brian proceeded on foot, the light guiding him through the increasingly rugged terrain. He climbed a small ridge and as he reached the top, he was stopped in his tracks by the sight before him. In a small clearing, surrounded by dense pines, was what appeared to be a spacecraft of some kind. 
It was unlike any human-made object Brian had ever seen. Sleek, metallic, with no visible seams or markings. It sat silently in the clearing, the pulsating light emanating from its undercarriage casting eerie shadows on the ground. As Brian watched, mesmerized, a panel on the side of the craft opened and a ramp extended to the ground. Three figures emerged, their bodies slender and elongated, moving with a fluid grace. Their skin shimmered under the craft's light, reflecting hues of silver and blue. They seemed to communicate with each other through a series of soft clicks and whirs, completely ignoring Brian's presence. Unsure of whether to retreat or introduce himself, Brian stood frozen, observing. The beings began deploying what looked like small devices around the clearing, each emitting a soft hum and a beam of light that scanned the surrounding area. Suddenly, one of the beings turned and noticed Brian. It stopped, tilting its head slightly, as if surprised. Then, with a speed that startled him, it approached, stopping a mere few feet away. Its eyes, large and wholly black, studied Brian intently, conveying an intelligence and depth that filled him with awe and terror. Brian felt a rush of thoughts flood his mind, images of far-off galaxies, strange starlit seas, and worlds beyond human comprehension. It was overwhelming, disorienting, and he realized the being was communicating with him telepathically. Just as he began to adjust to the flood of alien thoughts, another light appeared in the sky, this one red and ominous. It descended rapidly, heading straight for the clearing. The beings quickly retreated to their craft, their previous tasks abandoned. They paused at the ramp, one of them turning to look back at Brian, its gaze almost apologetic. Brian sensed urgency and danger in their sudden departure. As the red light grew closer, he understood that whatever was about to happen was beyond his understanding, possibly beyond his survival. The craft's ramp closed, and with a silent burst of light, it lifted off, disappearing into the night sky just as the red light converged on the clearing. Left alone, with the forest suddenly silent around him, Brian felt the gravity of what he had witnessed. The encounter was far from over, and as the red light settled above the clearing, bathing everything in a sinister glow, Brian realized that the night had more secrets to unveil, and they might not be as benign as his visitors from the stars. As the red light hovered ominously above, casting an eerie glow across the clearing, Brian felt a deepening sense of dread. The air grew thick, charged with a palpable tension that seemed to press against his skin. He knew instinctively that he needed to find shelter, to get away from the open space where he was far too exposed. Scrambling down the ridge, he rushed back to where he had left his ATV, his heart pounding in his chest. The forest seemed to close in around him, the trees now specters in the unsettling red light that filtered through their branches. He kept looking over his shoulder, half expecting something terrible to emerge from the shadows. When Brian reached his ATV, he quickly started it up and sped away, trying to put as much distance as possible between himself and the clearing. He decided to head towards one of the ranger stations, a fortified structure equipped with communications equipment. If he could get there, he could alert his superiors and possibly get some support. The ride through the forest was harrowing. The red light seemed to follow him, seeping through the gaps in the trees, always there a constant reminder of the unknown threat looming overhead. As he navigated the rough terrain, Brian's mind raced with possibilities. Who were those beings? What was the nature of the red light? Was it searching for them, or was it something more sinister? Finally, he reached the ranger station, a small beacon of safety amidst the unsettling phenomena. He burst through the door, secured it behind him, and immediately went to the radio. But as he tried to send out a distress call, he found to his growing horror that all communications were down. The radio emitted only static, and his cell phone showed no signal. It was as if the red light had created a dome of silence over the area. Frustrated and feeling increasingly isolated, Brian went to the back room of the station to access the emergency satellite phone. As he prepared to dial out, a sudden force shook the building. The windows rattled violently, and a deep droning sound filled the air vibrating through the very walls of the station. Rushing to the window, Brian looked out and saw that the red light had descended closer to the ground, pulsating with a more intense frequency. It was then that he noticed smaller shapes detaching from the main light, descending towards the ground and heading in various directions, including towards the ranger station. With a sinking feeling,
Brian realized that these might be scouts or drones sent out to investigate or secure the area. He quickly retreated from the window, moving to the back of the station, where there were fewer windows and more cover. He knew he had to defend himself, but against such an unknown and potentially advanced threat, he felt woefully underprepared. As he searched for anything that could be used as a weapon, the station's power flickered and went out, plunging him into darkness. The only light now came from the eerie glow of the red light outside, which seemed to pulse in sync with his rapid heartbeat. Brian crouched down behind a counter, his breath shallow and quiet, as he listened to the sounds of the drones approaching. The night had turned from a mission of routine surveillance to a struggle for survival. Brian knew he couldn't run. He had to withstand whatever was coming. But as the droning grew louder, and the shadows began to shift beneath the red light, he understood that the encounter was far from over, and the true nature of the threat was yet to reveal itself. As the droning intensified, the small shapes that had detached from the main red light converged near the ranger station. Brian, hidden behind the counter, felt every pulse of the red light as if it were synchronized with the thumping of his heart, each beat a loud echo in the quiet dread filling the room. The air vibrated with the presence of the drones, their mechanisms whirring softly outside the walls of the station. Brian clutched a fire extinguisher, the only weapon-like object he could find, as he peered cautiously over the counter. Through the window, he saw several drones, each about the size of a basketball, hovering just outside, scanning the building with beams of light that cut through the darkness like knives. Suddenly, one of the drone's lights fixed on the window where Brian was hiding. It stayed there, unwavering, as if it had seen him. Brian ducked immediately, heart racing, knowing that his location was now possibly compromised. The next moments were agonizing as he waited, expecting the drones to break through the glass. Instead, a new sound filled the air, a deep, resonating hum that seemed to come from the main red light still hovering above the trees. The station shook slightly, dust and small debris falling from the ceiling. The hum grew into a cacophony of alien sounds, as if a massive machine was powering up, preparing for something inevitable and catastrophic. Then, without warning, the main red light emitted a blinding pulse, a wave of energy that swept through the forest, distorting the air and sending a shockwave that shattered the windows of the ranger station. Brian, shielded partially behind the counter, felt the wave as a physical blast of heat and force, knocking him to the ground. Dazed and disoriented, he struggled to his feet, ears ringing, eyes watering from the sudden brightness. As his vision cleared, he saw that the interior of the station was exposed, walls and parts of the roof torn away by the sheer power of the pulse. The drones entered through the broken windows and the gaps in the walls, their lights probing the shadows. Brian, realizing there was no place left to hide, stood defiantly, fire extinguisher still in hand, facing the mechanical intruders. But as they hovered around him, scanning his body, he felt an inexplicable force pulling at him, tugging at his very cells. The last thing Brian saw before his vision faded was the drones circling closer, their lights converging into a single, piercing beam aimed directly at his chest. As his consciousness slipped away, overwhelmed by the alien force, he felt himself being disassembled, molecule by molecule, his physical form dissolving into the air, leaving behind nothing but a faint echo of his last terrified breath. The red light withdrew, ascending back into the night sky, leaving behind a silent, devastated landscape. The ranger station lay in ruins, a testament to the terrifying power and enigmatic purposes of the visitors. Brian, once a guardian of the natural world, had vanished, absorbed into the unknown machinations of an alien intelligence, his fate a chilling reminder of how vulnerable and unprepared humanity truly is when faced with the mysteries of the cosmos. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 